Welcome to the Cassandra Project, your source of actionable steps you can take to help avert nuclear war, as well as vital information to help you and your family survive an actual nuclear war. This project can also be found on Patreon and Locals. I'm Tim Gway, and today we'll look at how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. Well, actually not me, but most of the folks in the Western world. As for me, I do worry, and that puts me at odds with the mainstream and open to ridicule and slander. If you're pro-nuclear uh, disarmament and anti-war, that's viewed as being pro-Putin, pro-Z, naive at best, or worse, an act of treason. Seems pretty irrational, but hey, welcome to the 21st century, the century of warmongering and runaway military industrial complex. Yep, let's fire up the shredder as we shred away all the arms control agreements that were hard won, and let's unplug the hotline while we're about it. Who needs to de-escalate? Let's just press the button and just cremate the entire planet. But hey, hadn't we all learned to stop worrying and love the bomb as the movie Dr. Strange Love was subtitled? Certainly that seems to be the message from mainstream media and government, as best illustrated by the New York City New York nuclear survival ad, which I'll cover in a future video. Yep, nuclear war is no biggie according to mainstream news and the government, so relax. There are more important issues such as the correct use of pronouns and mathematics being racist. Yeah, we got to deal with those, don't we? That's uh, sadly... Uh, it is the fault of the mainstream media and the educational system for, you know, in this matter, as it indoctrinated the Western population to accept endless wars and even support them, as we are the good guys. After all, will we put up with well over a trillion dollars that uh, the combined NATO nations and other U.S. allies spend on the military? Who needs better health care when we have more nukes to buy? Yep, we got to buy more nukes, submarines and such. They also have to keep us dumb and happy in order to cover up that in countries such as the U.S., Canada, U.K., and Australia, among others, there are no nuclear fallout shelters, much less blast shelters for the ordinary citizens. What passes for civil defense is to tell you to shelter in the center of your house? Well, if you're close to a detonation and downwind, all that means it'll take 10 hours to get a lethal dose of radiation as opposed to the one hour if you're outside. So in the West, we're on our own, which is why I will cover nuclear war survival in future videos. However, you know, in Russia and China do have nuclear shelters for the majority of their populations, as do some European countries, such as Switzerland. So they'll be able to write it out in a lot better shape, although they're going to be a bit gaudy themselves. With the twin goals of maintaining support for the military-industrial complex and keeping us oblivious to the dangers of nuclear war, they've managed to create an environment where the anti-war and nuclear disarmament movements have withered away. This environment also includes the media diverting our attention towards climate change and social justice issues. While those are important issues, they do not threaten the military-industrial complex, which continues to suck up resources and pollute with impunity, as well as pose an ever-increasing existential risk to life on Earth. A global nuclear war would be the mother of all climate disasters, and social justice would then devolve to the equitable sharing of the last can of beans. The result of this gaslighting, indoctrination, and intimidation has not only reduced the awareness of the dangers of nuclear war, but has also discredited what little anti-war movement we still have. After all, if you stop worrying and learn to love the bomb, or at least be indifferent to its threat to life on Earth, you must mock or even hate those annoying people, such as myself, keep pointing out at the cost and the danger of war in general and nuclear war in specific. So, how do they mock us and show their hate? Well, they call us naive for wanting peace and nuclear disarmament, stating their adversaries will attack us for sure. Well, let's look at history. Question one. What was the only country to nuke another country? Question two, which country has invaded more countries than any other since the end of World War II? Question three, which country has threatened the use of nukes more than any other country? You guessed it, it's the good old USA. In fact, I would worry less about our adversaries attacking than us attacking. Oh, then you must be a Putin stooge. Not as I'm also critical of Russia's nuclear posturing, nuclear modernization, and invasion of the Ukraine. Though I fully understand Russia's reasons and how the West has provoked them, I also understand how Russia's history affected their current response to the West. And that will be a video onto its own also. The major power that I view as least likely to start a war is China. Regardless of Western rhetoric, the last war China fought was in 1979 when they foolishly attacked Vietnam and learned what everybody else has learned, that you cannot beat these people. 
Actions speak louder than words, and their actions are relatively non-aggressive compared to the U.S. and uh, Russia slash USSR. Though Taiwan is a definite flashpoint that could blow up in our faces, literally and figuratively. Oh, so you are a Z fanboy. Nope, I just look at actions. Since the year 2000, the U.S. has fought four wars. Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and Syria. Plus God knows how many special forces operations and drone attacks all over the place. Russia has also fought in four wars, in Chechnya, Georgia, Syria, by invitation, of course, and in Ukraine. As for China, zero. Yep, China's fought no wars this century. China may have its faults, but invading and bombing their neighbors is not one of them. As for nukes, China has far less, with about 350 warheads, compared to 1,580 that Russia has and the 1,744 that the U.S. have. Of course, these are ready warheads that can be used immediately. They've got okay. Thousands more in stockpile. Certainly 350 is more than enough deterrence for any country. Heck, the UK's 120 are more than enough. No need to have so many that an all-out global nuclear war will kill 5 billion people on this planet. And so those that say that being anti-war and for nuclear disarmament is means I'm a traitor, well, I'll quote from Khrushchev, who, who said, In my last hour, when I see the USSR and the US in ruins, uh, will I be happy to know I preserved the honor of the USSR? This he said in explanation is why he backed down during the Cuban Missile Crisis. So is treason wanting to see your children and grandchildren live a long and happy life and not die a horrible death? So is treason not wanting to see my country's cities reduced to radioactive slag heaps with the traumatized survivors eking out a bare existence in our radiated and nuclear winter-gripped country? You know, if critics still think that I'm a traitor, then they must feel that being pro-war and even pro-nuclear war is being patriotic. Okay. To lose 100 million lives is okay as long as the other side loses 200 million. Is that what you believe? Those of you who are uh, think that the uh, anti-war and anti-nuclear war movements are traitors, well, is it? What if it's you and your family that gets lost? If you impose the anti-war nuclear disarmament movements, think about the implications of that opposition, not only to the world, but to you and your family. Are you willing to have you and your family go through a nuclear war? You know, to die immediately, or die a horrible death from radiation, or starve, or just basically grub out a uh, bare existence as a hunter-gatherer in a post-apocalyptic hellscape. Because that's the risk if we allow the government hawks and military industrial complex to have their way. Finally, let's go look at whataboutism. That is when someone points out that the, what the West did is the same or worse, then their point is dismisses engaged in whataboutism. People will say that, well, you know, uh, you know, well, what about America, all their invasions? You know, well, sorry, that's you can't say, uh, say that. Well, I strongly believe that two wrongs do not make a right. Whataboutism signals the person dismissing a point uh, is either... Um, a fanatic ideologue slash patriot or is incapable of arguing fact versus fact. As the old saying goes, when the debate is lost, slander becomes the tool of the loser. I also believe that true patriotism is to be able to see your country's failings and areas for improvement than doing something about it. It's when others mock or slander you for being anti-war and pro-nuclear disarmament. Remember, you are the true patriot and they're trying to do something about it. For I cannot emphasize the importance of complete nuclear disarmament. It doesn't matter your nationality or politics for the sake of life on this planet, for the sake of your family's lives. We must work tirelessly towards nuclear disarmament by, by reviving the nuclear disarmament movement and by demonstrations, writing to our political representatives and discussing the risks and impact of nuclear war with our friends and families. So let's go out and do something about it. Okay, go for it. And thank you, and please like and subscribe if you want actionable information on the risks and effects of nuclear war, nuclear disarmament, and nuclear survival. Do feel to, uh, free to comment below. Those who want to materially support this channel, you can find me on Patreon or Locals. The links are below. I'm also on Reddit at uh, Cassandra Project. Stay tuned for my next video. Bye for now.